guys what's up welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are brand new here hi my name is crystal nice to meet you and you know what would be so freaking awesome if you guys went down there and hit that subscribe button so that we can become buddies we'll be like this guys all right so today's video is actually a highly requested one several of you have asked me to do a video where i walk you guys through the process of how i edit my videos and honestly that is so freaking flattering to me i cannot thank you guys enough that means so much to me you don't need this stuff this is just what i have you can make do with like what you have and i'll kind of show you guys how you can do that this is my laptop right here this is my pride and joy this is my baby i freaking love it i bought this with my own money it is everything to me i bought this when i was in school because i needed one and i wanted one so i got it for myself i saved up and i got it i have my ipad it's not like the ipad pro or anything all you need is for it to be compatible with the apple pencil and the last and most important thing that you need when editing is a hard drive this is just the seagate one i bought this at best buy my computer works great and all but the memory storage on it isn't the best so unless i have something like this to store my videos in my videos are not going to survive on that and my editing software is going to crash on me so this is so freaking important i do not stress that enough if you have not already gotten a hard drive go and get yourself a hard drive they are pretty pricey but they're well worth the money because they will be super beneficial I like to visualize what I want to do for the video. So ahead of me actually filming the video, what I like to do is I like to just jot down ideas. That way, when I actually get to filming the video, I have something to go off of. So I'm not like scripting the video or anything. I'm just putting down little key points of things I want to do, maybe angles I want to get, or certain things that I want to achieve in editing, but I also need the help during the filming process. So that way I can make sure I have a plan to go off of because otherwise i don't know about you guys but for me i get unmotivated if i'm filming a video and it's not going as planned and that's usually because i didn't plan out the video beforehand okay so there are several ways that you can edit a video i have the free way and i have the way that costs money now i'm gonna be honest you don't really have to spend money like i know you can do a lot more with the paid versions and you definitely can but you can do so much with free versions you just kind of have to know how to trick the system but don't get me wrong i always think that it's much more of an investment to get the real deal like if you're actually like going to commit to it i think it's definitely worth the money but like I said, you don't have to. Okay, so the first way that you can go about editing your videos if you just want to keep it super simple, iMovie. If you have an Apple product, you can download iMovie on your iPad, your iPhone, MacBook, desktop, whatever you have. Now, the editing software that I use is Final Cut and that one will cost you a pretty penny. It runs for $300, but if you are a student, you can get a discount on it and all you really have to do is go to Google, Google Final Cut Pro student discount and it'll take you right to there and you can save some money on it. That's how I got it. I know with Adobe you can do the same. I don't know exactly how it works. I think they do like monthly payments for some stuff. So definitely check it out. See what works best for you. You don't have to spend all the money on it. Like I said, if you don't want to, all you really need is an editing software that allows you to layer things. Okay, so I'm going to start off by showing you guys how to import. It's very easy. All you do is you bring up your file folder, which is connected to your hard drive. You just drag and drop the footage into Final Cut Pro. And if you see up here, it's thinking. All it's doing is it's importing that footage. So normally what I like to do is I like to import all of the footage first and let it all just sync up. Because otherwise, it's just going to keep freezing on you. So it's best to just let... Final Cut Pro do its thing. I start off by adding every video clip that I filmed into Final Cut Pro from my hard drive. Cause for me personally, it's just easier to go through the entire video once and cut everything out that I just don't want in there at first glance. And I'll go in and cut out any unnecessary footage. And usually that's awkward silences, maybe just me rambling on for so long. And I'm like, I don't need to say this extra information. I'll take all of that out. 
on the first go i don't know if you've ever been editing and there's this one spot that you want to add something but you have to come back to it because you can't do it in that moment you can actually just hit the letter m and it'll create a little marker so up at the top of the video footage it'll have a little purple tag so when you're going through, you can just look for that purple tag and you know that's where you wanted to add that one thing. There are several ways that you can record external audio into your video footage. And by external audio, I mean it's just not the audio that's straight out of your camera or whatever video recording device you are using. You can obviously get a professional mic there are like road mics and a lot of people use those. There are cheaper alternatives. This is one that I have. This is a lav mic and it's a really good one. The only bad thing about this specific one is that it has one of these. So it's not compatible to your phone unless you have one of those adapters that you can plug this into and then we'll plug into your phone. But I lost mine, so I'm kind of screwed at the moment. I can't really use this. The only way that I can use this really now is if I record the audio on my iPad because this iPad still has that aux or on my actual laptop and I can use it to record. Lately, I've just actually been preferring using my phone and all you have to do is just use the voice memo app that is on your phone guys literally you can see all the voice recordings i've done okay so audio can be kind of tricky because you do have to match up the external audio to the audio from the video you are recording and this is actually how big production companies do it too if you guys have ever seen the little marker board you know how they close the little marker board and it makes a little clapping sound well that is the way for them to match up audio to footage they have this whole other process i'm not even going to get into it they can actually go in and match it up without having to do it this way but this is just a way that you can do it it's worked for me so i'm just sharing the tip with you guys i'll press record on the audio and then what i will do is i'll just clap this is just me recording audio. You wanna to try to get it as close as possible. And if you want a really smooth recording, all you have to do is cover yourself in a blanket and it kind of creates this soundproof room. And it will make the audio a lot cleaner because you won't hear the background noise and all you really hear is you talking. You can literally just hold it up close to you. You can hold it a little bit far away and it will still actually record the audio. Okay, so real quick, if you hit the letter V, it's gonna take the sound off of the audio so you won't be able to hear it until you hit V on it again. When I go in to match the audio to the footage, all I have to do is look for that little peak for the sound of me clapping, just match it up. Sometimes you kind of have to tweak it a little, but normally it just matches right up. Once you line up the audio from the video to the one of the actual voice recording, you can detach the audio from the video. You wanna select the video footage, hit command, select the actual audio recording, and if you right click, create compound, and then it'll put those two together. So now when you go through and edit it, you're only editing one thing instead of trying to edit the audio and the video footage. I think the number one thing you guys want to see is how I edit. Wait, um, wait, where did I, um, oh, here it is. How I add in graphics to videos. Okay, so how do you go about adding graphics into videos? Google is an amazing platform where you can go on and find many, many graphics to use. So all you really have to do is when you Google, you wanna make sure that you add transparent to it. So I put in heart, I put transparent background. Go to images. Now some of these can be very tricky. What you want is for it to have that checkered background or for there to be no background at all. But you wanna make sure that when you do save it though, it says PNG. Find your photo. As you can see, that one was not. This one right here is transparent. How do I know? The background right there doesn't exist. When you click on it, it has that checkered background. Okay, so how do you create your own graphic on your phone if you don't have an iPad? All you need to do is download the app called Adobe Draw. It is free. When you start up a new project, it gives you this white background. You wanna make sure the background is non-existent. 
So all you have to do is click on the background layer and then just hit delete. Now the only layer you have is the drawing layer and as you can see it has that checkered background so that means your photo is going to be transparent when you save it. You have your little options here. You can edit it as you wish how you want to make your graphic look. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write out something simple. Like I'm going to write the word hey. I'm going to save it as an image. As you can see, it has no background. Procreate is my favorite app in the entire world. This is an app that will allow you to completely draw your own animations. You can create these graphics, whatever you want. It completely allows you to channel your creativity and I absolutely love that about this app. This app, however, is not free. I believe it costs $10 to download this app. You can also actually download Adobe Draw on your iPad and that's free. A very quick lesson on how to use Procreate and I'll pop it up right here. You want to go into Procreate and create a new slate. Keep the dimensions at 1920 by 1080. First thing and most important thing is you want to make sure you use layers. I cannot stress that enough. I don't know how many times I've made a mistake and because I kept it all on the same layer, I had to restart that entire layer because I did not create a new layer when I went to create something new. If you want to just have text so that you can lay it over your video footage, you wanna make sure you take off that background and you can just select that little square there and it'll get rid of it. Okay, let's say I just wanna insert something that says subscribe. I want to add like a background to it. So I'm gonna click on the layers and put it underneath this one. So let's say I wanna do a pink background. All you have to do is go in draw that and then you want to drag in the pink now that I have that I can go ahead and export it and you want to make sure you save it as a PNG now let's say you do want a background you can always bring back the background at that point you can select any other color you want let's say I want to add a pink I mean <laughs> color blind let's say I want to add a yellow background color okay so I'm just gonna put simply transition to make it a little bit more aesthetic there we go. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And this one, you can just save it as a JPEG. Okay, so now that you have the actual layover put into Final Cut Pro, what you want to do is you obviously don't want this to be right on top of the entire video unless you do want it. Like, let's say you did something where it fits the video. But right now, obviously, we don't want a big subscribe button right all over my face. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you have that clip selected and that you have this cursor on top of that footage and you want to hit the transform button here so that you can resize it to whatever size you like and let's say we just want it to be right here at the bottom you hit done but let's say you want to animate this so we're going to start off here at the beginning you're going to click on the transform button again but this time you're going to be using the keying tool and that's right up here at the corner it looks like a little cross so you're gonna click on that keying tool. I'm gonna start it off over here. You wanna hit play, but then at this point, I want this to move in. So you're gonna drag this in to the place where you want it. And as you can see, it has this little red line. It's almost like a fishing line. It's gonna show the transition of how it's gonna move. I'm gonna hit play again. And at this point, let's say I want this to go up. And at this point, I want this to show up one more time over here. And then at this point, I want it to just disappear out of frame. So this is going to show all of the points that it's going to hit. Now we're going to replay it. And the subscribe button shows up. Now we have here the transition slide. As you can see, this one was not saved as a PNG. And it's on top of video footage. But you can't see the video footage because it was a JPEG. So I'm going to go ahead and place it right here. So now it's going to act as an actual transition slide. That's obviously way too long. We don't need it to be that long. I just sort of start cutting it and decide for myself how long do I want it. I feel like that's still too long. I feel like that's pretty good. We're going to cut that out. The one thing that I personally really like in video is having background music. I know a lot of people find it distracting. Some people find it that it's necessary. I personally find that it's necessary. There are several websites you can get background audio from, but you want to make sure that it's copyright free because otherwise your video is going to get copyrighted, which is really annoying. I actually like to use audio library on 
YouTube itself. It's not associated with YouTube, but it's this channel that goes through and finds audio that's already copyright free. There's also no copyright music, but that one is kind of more of like a trap music thing. So it just sort of depends what you're looking for, but you can literally just go into the search bar on YouTube and search for copyright free music and you'll literally get so many. You just kind of have to spend a lot of time. I don't know how much time I literally spend trying to find new copyright free music. So it's pretty simple. It just looks like it'd be hard, but you just kind of have to get the hang of it. And then you can be as creative as you want with your own videos. I hope this video was somewhat useful for you guys. I'm really bad at explaining things. So I tried my best to get the point across to you guys. But if this was helpful for you guys, or if you enjoyed watching this video, please give this video a big ol' like. It really does help me out. And make sure you guys go down and subscribe, like I said, so we can be buddies, guys. We'll be like this. I wanna be your friend. So hit that subscribe button so you guys can keep coming back. Guys, we hit 600 subscribers. I can't even begin to thank you guys enough for taking that time to like, comment, subscribe. It truly means so much to me that you guys are giving me time out of your day. Thank you. And don't forget that you guys can turn on those post notifications so you guys get notified when I post a new video. I do post every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. But with that being said, guys, I will see you all later. Peace.